Something incredible has happened while updating the video workflow, something Meta promised but never actually released to the open source community. This involves adding audio to video using the video itself as a driver. MM Audio is a set of nodes that lets you directly synchronize sound with video, and it's all thanks to Kijai, who released this so quickly that it caught everyone by surprise. Previously, we explored how to add sound effects to an image. The challenge was that the sound didn't align with the video. This time, everything is synchronized, and it changes the way AI video creates works. To demonstrate, I've made four videos using LTX videos and downloaded two more to show how to add sound to them. I'll walk you through the workflow step by step after a quick demo. Before we get started, a quick reminder, liking and subscribing helps me out a lot. This makes sure the algorithm ensures that you don't miss updates like these. Here's what the workflow includes, the load video upload node from the video helper suit, the model loader node, the features utils loader node for VAE, the sync former and clip models, the sampler video info node, and finally the preview audio and video combine nodes. You don't need to tweak most of the settings. I only change the control after generate option to randomize. There are two ways to create sound for a video with this workflow. First, you can let the model generate sound automatically without adding a prompt. This method uses the video's information to create its own soundscape. Second, you can add your own prompt and the model does a great job incorporating it into the video. Now let me show you how it works. Here are the six videos we'll be working with. I'll start with the first one and upload it without any prompt. When you run the workflow for the first time, it might take longer because the models need to load into memory. Once it's ready, the results can be previewed as audio only or as audio combined with the video. Just hover your mouse over the video to get it to start. The LTX videos I've prepared are about 4 seconds long. Longer videos will come later. Let's try adding a prompt to the same video. I'll use two prompts. The first is a detailed description, and the second is simpler. The first prompt is soft dripping of rain, distant thunder, flickering torch flames, echoing footsteps on wet ground, creaking buildings, the woman's labored breaths, rustling clothes, and the soldier's clinking armor and murmurs, all underscored by an ominous heartbeat like pulse. Let's listen to how it sounds. Pretty impressive, right? It's remarkable. Like the audio knows exactly where to fit within the video, making it so much more immersive. I've got an idea. I'll enable the save output option and start again, this time without using a prompt. Earlier, I wasn't sure why there was a preview audio output option, but now it makes sense. First, I'll save the audio output with the name video one audio one. After that, I'll reapply the prompt to see what the results are like. The sound is fantastic. Next, I'll combine both audio tracks in CapCut. And the result is incredible. Let's listen to it. This is genuinely impressive. You can take a video clip, provide a specific prompt to generate a custom sound, or run the model without a prompt to let it generate its own interpretation. You could even experiment with mood soundtracks, layering them over one another to create rich audio experiences. This workflow opens up so many possibilities. For the next example, I'll try a simpler prompt. Crowd footsteps on wet cobblestone, flame torch flicker, chains dragging, and angry crowd chanting, eerie wind blowing. Let's listen to what this produces. It's clear that this is endlessly fun to experiment with. The next video I'll upload is a bit more static, with little to no movement. I want to see how the model handles videos like this. To start, I'll process it without any prompt. The results feel a bit inconsistent without a prompt, which could be due to the lack of motion in the video. Let's try again. Just 
It's still too random for my liking, and I'm convinced that it's because the video lacks enough visual cues for the model to work with effectively. For a more controlled test, I'll use the following prompt. Heavy patter of rain, water dripping from jackets onto slick pavement, distant echoes of dripping water and faint rumbling thunder, the hum of a neon sign buzzing intermittently, the soft shuffle of shifting weight on wet ground, and the eerie stillness punctuated by the faint hiss of street light illumination. Let's hear the result. This is significantly better, far more cohesive and fitting. You might be wondering how I came up with these prompts. Here's the method I use. I take the description I originally used to create the video, and I paste it into ChatGPT with a simple request. Take the following description of a scene and provide sounds that could belong in or enhance this scene. Please summarize it in one sentence. Once I get the reply, I copy that sentence and paste it into the positive prompt field of the workflow. It's as straightforward as that. You can also write your own prompt directly if you have specific sounds in mind that you want to include. Let's move on to the next video. This one has even less motion than the previous example, so I'm curious to see how the model handles it. I'll start by using this prompt, the faint hum of fluorescent lights, the distant drip of water echoing through the corridor, soft rustling of fabric as the figure shifts slightly, muted footsteps on cracked concrete, an occasional creak or groan of the aging structure in an eerie, resonant stillness. Let's listen. The audio fits beautifully. I realized I forgot to test this one without a prompt, so I'll go back and process it again, this time leaving the prompt field empty. It's hard to decide which version I prefer. The ambient soundtrack the model generated without a prompt adds such an eerie and unexpected layer. It's brilliant in its own way. For the next test, I'll switch things up with a completely different type of video. This one features a car as the main subject. I'll start by processing it without a prompt to see what the model generates on its own. The MM Audio model consistently delivers exactly what's needed. Let's try it with a prompt this time. The roaring engine of the red sports car, the screech of tires on pavement during a sharp turn, the rush of wind whipping past, the faint hum of the city skyline in the distance, and the crackling of displaced dust and gravel as the car accelerates into the glowing sunset. It sounds incredible, doesn't it? For the next test, I'll use a longer video, about 20 seconds. Let's see what happens. Right away, I encounter an out-of-memory error. To troubleshoot, I shorten the clip to 10 seconds, then again to 5 seconds. First, I'll process the 5-second clip. Here's the result. Now I'll try the 10-second clip. This process took some time to work through. To make it function properly, I adjusted the force rate in the video helper node by adding 20. This adjustment allowed it to generate at least 8 seconds of audio. If I increase the force rate to 24, it will create audio matching the length I've specified, even though it might take longer to process. This experiment highlights a couple of important things. A 20 second clip simply doesn't run on my setup, which has 8 GB of VRAM. The 5 second clip works seamlessly, while the 10 second clip produces audio only when the frame rate is forced to 24. It's also worth noting that this node only works with videos that are 24 frames per second. If you're working with a video that has a higher frame rate, you can still try forcing it using the force rate field to see if it produces any results. MM Audio is remarkable. It feels like a genuine breakthrough. This tool brings us closer to creating fully realized AI-generated short stories with professional-grade sound. Its real strength lies in its flexibility. You're not locked into using it with a specific video model. It works with any video as long as it's at 24 frames per second. Let's move on to the installation process for the nodes. The first thing to check is whether you're running Torch 2.5.1 on Comfy. This tool won't function without it. To check your Torch version, open Comfy and look at the terminal. There's a line that specifies the PyTorch version. In my case, it says 2.3.1 plus CU121. If your Torch version is below 2.5.1, you'll need to update Comfy UI. 
open your Comfy Manager and click Update All. Once that's complete, restart Comfy and check if your Torch version has changed. If the version is still outdated, there's another method. Navigate to the Comfy UI Update folder on your system and double click on the file called Update Comfy UI and Python dependencies. Be aware that this process updates not just Torch, but other dependencies as well, which could potentially disrupt certain nodes. It's a frustrating issue to deal with, especially in the world of AI where dependency conflicts are all too common. A third option is available and might work better. In the video description below, there's a link to the PyTorch wheel page. Click on that to access the page. Once you're on the page, press Ctrl plus if on your keyboard to open the search function. Type the following into the search field, 2.5.1, followed by a plus sign, then your CUDA version. You can find your CUDA version near the top of the Comfy terminal, where it lists the PyTorch version. In my case, it's CU121, so I'll add CU121 to the search field. After that, add dash and then CP. Next, include your Python version, which is also displayed at the top of the Comfy terminal under Python version. Mine is 3.11.9, so I'll add 3.11 to the search field. At this point, you should see two options, one for Linux and one for Windows. Since I'm on Windows, I'll select the Windows version. This download is about 2.3 gigabytes, so it might take some time, depending on your internet speed. Once the download is complete, locate the file and copy it. Navigate to the Python embed folder on your computer, then paste the file there. At the top of the folder in the navigation bar, type cmd and press enter. This will open the command prompt within the folder. Next type python.exe-m pip install torch into the command prompt. Instead of typing the torch wheel path manually, press the tab key on your keyboard. This will automatically load the correct torch wheel. Press enter and wait for the installation to finish. Once the installation is complete, start Comfy UI and check the terminal to confirm that the new torch version is installed. The next step involves accessing the Kijai repository. Click the link in the description to open it, then click on the code drop down menu and copy the URL. Go to your custom nodes directory on your computer. Right click inside the directory and choose open in terminal from the context menu. Type git clone into the terminal, then paste the URL you copied from the repository and press enter. Wait for the cloning process to complete, then close the terminal. Next, navigate to your comfy UI folder. Right click inside the folder and select open in terminal. In the terminal, type the following command. This command is also included in the description below, so you can copy and paste it directly. Press enter and wait for the required packages to finish installing. Once the installation is complete, you can start Comfy UI and drag the workflow into the interface. If any nodes are missing, you'll need to install them. Open the Comfy Manager, click on Install Missing Nodes, select the missing nodes from the list, and click Install. Let's move on to the models. The download links for all models are in the description. There are two types of models, the FP32 model which is suitable for high performance setups and the FP16 model which is designed for systems with more modest capabilities. For this tutorial I'll use the large 44K V2 FP16 model. Download the model and save it to the model's MM Audio folder. If the folder doesn't exist, you'll need to create it manually. You'll also need to download the FP16 VAE and the SyncFormer files. These should also be saved in the model MM Audio folder. The next file you'll need is the clip model. However, don't download the one from Kijai's repository just yet. Instead, click on the link in the description to access the clip files repository. Download the entire repository excluding the files named open clip pytorchmodel.bin and pytorchmodel.bin. Save these files to the model's MM Audio folder. Within this folder, create a new folder named Apple. Inside the Apple folder, create another folder or leave the model structure in the description below. Paste all the downloaded clip files into this final folder. Once that's done, download the clip model from Kijai's Hugging Face repository and save it to the same Apple folder. This approach will save time and avoid downloading the larger clip files unnecessarily. The last set of models you'll need are the Big VGAN files. Click on the repository link provided in the description and download the complete Big VGAN package. Save these files in the models MM Audio NVIDIA inside the Big VGAN folder. You can find the full name in the description below. Once these files are in place, the setup is complete. Double check that the model VAE and SyncFormer files are all in the models slash MM audio folder. The rest of the necessary files will download automatically as needed. For users with slower internet connections, downloading the clip and big vegan files manually can save time and reduce the chances of errors during the process. This is a neat tool and incredibly useful for any storytelling workflow. It's intuitive, powerful, and offers a lot of flexibility. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this, and thank you for watching Sneaky Robot. Till next time.